Welcome to problem 14 of the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 final practice exam. Uh, so this says it's an induction problem, but we skimmed through this earlier and it's got a definition of Fibonacci up here, the Fibonacci sequence. And down here it's got a proof that's got nothing to do with Fibonacci numbers and nothing to do with induction. So I'm actually going to do parts A, B, and C right now. They don't have anything to do with the uh, Fibonacci numbers. They're not induction proofs. They're just kind of plain old proofs. I might not do all three of them because they've actually all got kind of the same structure to them. Uh, I might just do one of them and leave the rest to you. I'm going to do the induction parts either as one separate screencast or maybe two. They're coming soon, so you'll find out when you see them. So let's just scroll down here and get the induction part out of the way. So this says prove that the sum of two odd numbers is an even number. For this and the next two problems, probably not by induction. And the next two problems are proving that the sum of two even numbers is an even number and proving that the sum of an odd number and an even number is an odd number. Um, so, how do we prove that the sum of two odd numbers is an even number? Well, first of all, what are we proving? Are we really proving that there's two odd numbers out there whose sum is an even number? In that case, like, the numbers could be 1 and 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, that's even. Or there could be 1 and 3, and 1 plus 3 is 4, and that's even. And, you know, maybe I can choose one of those and I'm done. That's not a very exciting property. What we probably really mean is that for every pair of odd numbers, their sum is an even number. So we're proving a universal. And we want to say, without loss of generality, let um, n1 and n2 be odd numbers. We don't know what odd numbers these are, but we want to show that the result is an even number. So what do we know about n1 and n2? What does it mean to be an odd number? Well, what it means to be an odd number, so odd n, is equivalent to there is some integer, say k, such that n is equal to 2k plus 1. That's what it means to be odd. You're not 2 times an integer, you're 1 more than 2 times an integer. Or you might have seen this as 1 less than 2 times an integer. It's actually the same definition. Okay, so we we know that about n and 1 and, and n2. We're not proving that. We are not proving they're odd numbers. So we are not proving this existential. We're assuming it. Okay, we are assuming this thing here about n1, and we're assuming it about n2. That means we're going to end up with a couple of k's. I strongly recommend you give them different names. So I'm going to call them k1 and k2 to correspond to n1 and n2. Because I'm assuming the existential, I don't know anything about my k1 and my k2 other than the fact that they're integers. And that makes sense. If I don't know what n1 is, I can't possibly say, well, I'm going to choose k to be 3, because in that case I know n1 is actually 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, so I know n1 is 7 all of a sudden, but I was supposed to be doing this proof without loss of generality. So I can't just choose my k1, I can't just choose my k2, but I know they exist. So I can say, so uh, there are k1 and k2 uh, in the integers such that n1 equals 2k1 plus 1, and n2 equals 2k2 plus 1. And I want to prove now that their sum is an even number. So I want to prove n1 plus n2 is equal to, well, what's an even number? An even number is one where there is some integer such that the number is equal to 2 times that integer. So it's really equal to 2k3 for some integer k3. So how do I prove that? Well, the usual way. This is an equality, so I'm going to start on one side, and I'm going to work to the other side. Now, I'm running out of space in this little blank here, and that's something I'm, we're allowed to do on practice exams. We can give you way too little space. I even gave myself more space in this version I'm showing you here. So don't expect to have enough space on the practice exam. Uh, but let's keep going here. So. I'll start from one side, and I'll work to the other. n1 plus n2 is kind of the more complex side. OK. Oh, you know what? I'm proving this for some integer k. Sorry, I should be choosing k3 first. Choose 
K3 equal to, and I don't know what to choose it to be yet. I know it is an integer, and I know it can be based on uh, n1, n2, k1, k2, because those all appear above, and otherwise I, I don't really know anything about it. So we'll come back to that choice. Okay, so now let me make myself more more room. I'll move n1 and n2 down. So n1 plus n2 is equal to, well, I'll just use my formulas up above here. So that's 2k1 plus 1 plus 2k2 plus 1. I'll just rearrange to simplify. That's 2k1 plus 2k2 plus 2. And there's 2s in all that. That's good. That's going to be even. That is 2 times k1 plus k2 plus 1. This is an integer right here. Um, so if that were k3, I'd be done, right? I would be equal to 2k3. That's what I'm going for here. And I get to choose k3. And I can choose it on the basis of k1 and k2. So that is just what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose k3 to be equal to this thing in here. So I'll choose it to be k1 plus k2 plus 1, which I know to be an integer because k1 and k2 are integers. And of course, so is 1. So that is equal to 2k3. And that's it, qed. Therefore, the sum of these two odd numbers is an even number. I'm just going to mark the the red stuff is scratch work for my kind, kind marker to give me as many marks as possible, and I'm done. I'm not going to prove part B and part C. They're really all kind of the same proof. You're going to go through exactly the same process. They all have exactly the same proof structure. They all use the same definitions. It's just slightly different algebra along the way. So try those out for yourself. They're good practice. And we'll assume them when we move on to parts D and beyond.